Poland Frisch is a gem to me. There isn't another one like it. I love coming to work. This is an extraordinary organization um, that is very strong. It's making contributions uh, uh, to the industry. It is a leader within the industry. It's very well respected. I've seen distributors rise and fall and disappear, except one. I can't see why I wouldn't be here 200 years from now. The company was founded in 1916 by Moses Cole. He started the business in his home at 62 Major Street, selling tobacco and candy products to merchants of the area. Toronto was a small city in those days. My father joined Mr. Cole in 1938 as a salesman and a bookkeeper. He could be an accountant, he could be a salesman. He loved selling, he loved people. He was like a son to them, they adored him. Irving became a partner in 1951, and the name became Cole and Frisch. 1955, Mr. Cole retired, and Irving took over the whole business. This is the purchase and sale agreement of Moses Cole and Sarah Cole to Irving and Ruth Frisch. Everybody loved Irving Frisch. In my opinion, he was a perfect gentleman. I think the best I can say about Irving, he was sharp as a tack, but he never put himself on top of anybody. He always treated you as an equal. People who came here from the DP camps, he helped them find a life. He taught them how to be a business person. And he would say to them, don't worry about it. You'll pay me when you can. The joke in the industry was one could have a baby faster than they'd have to pay off their opening order from Irving Frisch. I still remember going to baseball games with my grandfather. He had this uncanny knack for being able to predict what was going to happen in an inning. And he was really great at kind of forecasting how the game was going to play out. And I think he, he probably brought that same vision and that same cunning to, uh, to his business dealings. Superior customer service was going to be their, their rallying cry. In the 30 years that I have dealt both as a competitor and a customer with Cole and Frisch, I don't recall one bad experience. I've been dealing with Cole and Frisch about 45 years. I tell you, I don't ever remember finding a mistake or having a mistake in, in invoicing or even in shipping. Double check the order, triple check the order if you need to internally, so the customer doesn't even need to. One of the reasons why they're so successful is because they set such a high standard in their company about doing the right thing. Doing the right thing. When that is the way you think every day, when everybody is on the same page on that, then it makes it easier to, to address a challenge that's thrown at you. I can recall on numerous instances where we needed a certain inventory and we needed it right away, where they worked around the clock for like two, three days and no complaints. If you need anything, you call, you have a person to talk to, they'll take care of you right away. If there is a problem, they will solve it right away. KNF has always been an extremely responsive company. Uh, when we have needed information from them, when we've needed to work together, there's always been someone there at the end of the phone to answer the call. They definitely have an open door policy. In 29 years, I could always phone Ron if I needed to phone him. I never needed to call him. You need somebody to understand your uh, perception, what's happening, and how to solve it and uh, that's KNF. Well, the best part of uh, you know, making customers happy day in, day out is uh, when they come back and do business with us. A lot of companies, they have slogans, oh, customer service. KNF, you knew, was gonna walk the talk. They had a history of delivering the promise. This business was built on relationships. Irving financed his customers. He was their partner. Paul and Frisch did not look at us as customers or suppliers. They looked at us as partners. Many of the large groups we've dealt with over the years started as independents. And if they start small, they can become big. Every store that we deliver, so regardless of what the banner is above the door, they are all individual customers, and, and as such, we want to provide them the service that they, they're expecting. The relationship with Shoppers Drug Mart was the longest one we've had as a company. When Murray Koffler started building his Shoppers Drug Mart vision, it started with just a couple of drugstores, and he had a relationship with my father, and they supported one another. Both companies grew handsomely, 
because of our relationship and because of the trust in each other and because of our real keen knowledge of the market. From time to time, like we come to have cappuccinos uh, with Ron here. Yeah. <laughs> his famous cappuccino. Yeah, yeah. Everybody <laughs> loves his cappuccino. <laughs> In 1962, the company moved to Dufferin Street. It was a hub of activity. It was organized chaos. We had approximately about 40 people and employees, and we had about uh, six, 7,000 square feet. In the early 70s, we realized we'd outgrown Dufferin Street and ended up moving to Sunrise Avenue in Scarborough. Where we got 100,000 square feet. Mr. Fresh used to always say, what am I going to do with all this space? Because it was so huge. In uh, 1980, I joined the company. After working for four years in accounting, I actually got my CA degree and decided to go into the family business. I think Ron brought a new vision to Golden Fresh. My definition of, of a good CEO is, is somebody that sets the direction, making sure the right people are there, and then get out of the way and let them do their jobs. And Ron does that very well. I came in as a vice president of finance, but I really did a lot of everything, and that's what one does in a family business. A title might be one thing, but you actually do just about everything. My brother and I worked years together, my brother Harvey. Irving was very proud of his boys. In 1989, we bought Keel Street, which we're still in and has been a wonderful uh, location for us. By the time we got into pharmaceuticals, our largest customer base was drugstores. And we were supplying them with tobacco, confectionery, health and beauty aids, sundry products like batteries and bulbs. And so we were going to the drugstore just about every day with everything except their pharmaceuticals. So a lot of customers said, you know, you do such a great job on the front shop, better than the guy who's supplying me with my pharmaceuticals, why don't you get pharmaceuticals already? When they got into the pharmaceutical business, they became a very serious threat. But they went about it in a way that was similar to how they had managed the rest of their business. Close contact with their customers, generous credit terms, which is something that multinational companies don't support. Colin Frisch had the flexibility, I guess, to uh, support their pharmacy customers better. Same-day delivery was a game-changer. It, it did not exist in the GTA when we rolled it out. We rolled it out in response to customers suggesting that might be something that would differentiate our service. I suggested to them that if you could make a second delivery later on in the day, that would be a big help. And he thought about it and he said, that's a really good idea. Every day I would go home and after dinner I'd check our sales for the day to see which stores bought and how much. and you know, make notes for the next day, and, and it was just growing from zero. In 1994, the Ontario government decided to ban the sale of tobacco in drugstores. Colin Frisch was a tobacco-centric wholesaler. We got all their tobacco from them. It was 25% of our business. And overnight, they had it, it had to disappear. So we had to redefine ourselves, and Irving and his sons had to redefine their selves. There was this total bond with shoppers. But, you know, that's good news on one hand. On the, on the other hand, there's a real uh, dependency on that bond with shoppers. So Walmart comes to Canada in 1994. Shoppers Drug Mart undertakes a review of their business, and their conclusion is, in order to be on a level playing field with Walmart, we have to do self-distribution. So thanks for everything, Colin Frisch. But when the contract ends in a year, we're not going to renew with you. We had two major blows to our business in a very short period of time. And the, the combined effect of losing tobacco and drug stores and losing the Shoppers Drug Mart business sliced our sales more than half. And the prospects weren't that good. Ron took that news and said, OK, that's the past. We have to figure out and move on. And he was relentless with that um, philosophy, with that idea. We had a good business. We had a good culture. We had a good work ethic. We had a good reputation. And with all of that going for us, hopefully we'd identify something that made sense for us uh, to rebuild the company. Instead of kind of just going, oh, well, we lost shoppers, what are we going to do? The next thing you hear is KNF is a, the sole supplier for, for Walmart. 
all of a sudden we were faced with having only one choice of national supply. And guess what? That particular supplier decided to increase the prices for us. And one thing Walmart's very allergic to is uh, high prices. So uh, we started to look around and that's when we banged on the door of Ron Frisch and Colin Frisch. I don't know if it would have happened if shoppers had stayed with us because there was, there was a feeling the shoppers and we were so close that a Walmart might have thought, I don't want to be second banana to shoppers. I, we're Walmart. It was a big risk for both parties because uh, Ron at the time just had operations in Ontario, was had a very good reputation in Ontario, was doing very well there, but had no presence across the, the big country of Canada. I'm very appreciative of the fact that they, f they thought that highly of us, that we would not let them down. And we didn't let them down. And everyone on our team worked their butt off to make sure that we rolled this out well and we did a good job. Because of what Colin Frisch did and the exceptional effort they went to, which is really to set up this national uh, logistics and supply chain on the back of our agreement, uh, I approached the president and he agreed that we should uh, award them with a special uh, vendor performance award for that particular year. Ron, over the course of his uh, business transactions here, has won three distinct awards with us. One in Quebec, uh, a vendor of the year award there, one in our Sam's Club business, and then Ron won a special award, I can't remember the year here at Walmart, and I can tell you, those vendor awards have the highest standard of performance, ethics, and uh, collaboration. No one saw that they were willing to expand to become a national player, so they weren't taken seriously as a threat. Once they became a national player, then the growth uh, rate, I guess you can say, accelerated greatly. Amerisource Bergen is uh, a Fortune 500 company, and they wanted to have a presence with a national, national profile retailer. And they were determined to win a win a contract, and the one that came up was Pharmasave. And we were the primary one, and ABC put forward a a, a very uh, aggressively priced proposal for us to be in that ballpark price-wise would be detrimental to the business. Knowing where to draw the line and having a set of principles that you're truly committed to make decision-making a lot easier. Ron is excellent at making difficult decisions. We'd lived through shoppers leaving. We could live through PharmaSafe leaving. Six months later, Amerisource in the U.S., one of the executives that I'd known for many years, called me and asked to have dinner. And his conclusion was that, that uh, they had maybe um, made a mistake and that the Canadian market did not require three national players and they were thinking of leaving. And would I be interested in acquiring their Canadian division? There's no way I would have said yes to it if I felt it would compromise our service to Walmart. If it compromises your business, you're betting the ranch and I won't do that. But I felt very strongly that we had the ability to take this on. I was with Ron and Matthew in the car, and uh, they said, oh, Amerisource Berg, and I said, I said, they're huge. I said, I almost thought, were they buying us? He said, no, we're buying their business in Canada. And I had to sit back and whistle. I said, holy smokers, what a move. Colin Frisch was competing against large American companies in Canada, and we bought one of them. <laughs> And so the national wholesalers went from three, including McKesson, down to two with Amerisource's departure. It was all hands on deck. That, that ABC merger was all hands on deck. We had to uh, get all the customers in our system, all the products in our system. We had to bring over new DCs, incorporate them into our current DC network. So it was a lot of people working a lot of hours. I've never seen folks work so collaboratively and a common goal, and that's why we were able to pull it off, because it was an incredible undertaking. I think it's one of the, our, our biggest, proudest moments. And I told everybody that we would be evaluated by our service on June the 1st, that very first day after the transition when it's all coal and frish. That's when customers would decide if we were up to it. It was seamless. It was absolutely seamless. Ron and his team were wonderful in, in that transition. How well we did in that, that merger, I think, brought on new customers. Costco saw that there was no interruption to service. And I think when I then said to them, we can take on your business as a primary and we can handle the transition, 
They didn't doubt my word. They committed to deliver every one of our pharmacies by eight o'clock in the morning, five days a week. I wasn't getting any assurance that we could even come close to an early morning delivery from our other supplier. We did feel that uh, Colin Frisch could meet that commitment, and so we decided to uh, give them the opportunity, which they have delivered on tr tremendously. What Colin Frisch does really well is our core business. Given that this is a narrow profit margin industry, uh, we service world-class retailers such as Walmart and Costco, we must work extremely efficiently. And that's what we do every day. We're just happy we're able to. The plaque going up on the 401, that just give me goosebumps. <laughs> Today, True Patriot Love, an organization that raises money to help soldiers and their families, unveiled a plaque on the Avenue Road Bridge. Plaques are sponsored by communities or businesses. This one by a century-old Canadian company called Coal and Frisch. I think it's something that is part of our culture, that there's a common feeling amongst the membership of the company that we do we do good things, and, and this is one of them. It makes you feel proud, man. <laughs> yeah. You can not create a big business with one generation. Big business build over years. It has to take two or three generations to be big. Ron loves to um, include the kids with major decisions. He loves their input. Matthew has given to Ron what Ron gave to his father. Fresh eyes, a different way of looking at things. He's come in and um, earned the respect of people and you can only do that yourself. It really is a privilege to be able to work with my father. Um, he's, he's somebody who's been so successful in this industry and with this business and what he's done with this company in terms of really building on what his father before him had done. I've been here for five years, and within that time, I think the company has really started to evolve in some exciting directions. I mean, we've grown from having just a few depots and offices to nine nationally. We recently implemented three new warehouses, one in Vancouver, Calgary, and Winnipeg. At a given time, we ship around 15 to 18,000 parcels within a 24-hour shift. Well over 900,000 deliveries each year. So you can only imagine uh, what kind of planning goes into to make sure that we don't miss a beat. And uh, it's all thanks to the people that work on the floor to make it happen day after day. They're one of the first uh, distribution centers to become highly automated. What that contributes is an astounding level of accuracy, an astounding level of the right products getting to the right place at the right time, and a significant decrease in errors and in losses and in a wasted product. They're ahead of the curve, always ahead of the curve. And it's just, they, they're steadfast in navigating through change. The ability to adapt, to change, to make the adjustments as you go has been something that Colin Frisch has demonstrated throughout the years. One would argue that uh, the success of Walmart uh, has led to the success of Colin Frisch, but I would, I would term it a little bit differently. His ability to adapt to our growth and invest in his business gave us the success rate that we enjoy in the Canadian marketplace today with our patients. I think the entrepreneurial spirit is what allows Cole and Frisch to continue to evolve and stay nimble within the markets. It has to be the fact that they've just done the job that they've done with us for the last two years, that they've in fact done that over the last hundred years. We're very successful in, in balancing the corporate with keeping the passion of the family business alive. The way that people collaborate and work so hard together, it, it makes you feel, there's a sense of community. It doesn't have the layers that a lot of other organizations have, so I think decision making is probably a little quicker, a little easier. When action's required, action's taken and, it's, and it happens quickly. In public companies, you you don't necessarily see the leadership team and they're just away in offices. Whereas here, you see Ron, you see Matthew, Ron's walking in the warehouse saying hi to everyone. When we have employee events, everyone, you'd think he's a celebrity, everyone wants to take pictures with him, it's hilarious.
I was amazed at the number of employees that had more than 25 years of service. I've been with the company for 41 and a half years. I've been a dryer with Colin Fresh for 42 years. 43 years. You know, the fact that an independent Canadian family-owned business is still a dominant player in this sector is a testament to Ron's commitment, judgment, strategic skills. 100 years is a big deal. You almost want to pinch yourself that your company is celebrating 100 years. Not too many people can say that. You've got to take your hats off to them. I mean, it's an incredible accomplishment. As a company that's grown to the extent that we have, and as a company that's lasted as long as we have, you need to have great people in order to sustain that success. Thankfully, we have a great team across the country, and I couldn't be prouder uh, to be associated with them and, and for all their contributions to our success. Oh, I'm ready for the next hundred. I, I don't know, I hope I'll be here. That would be nice with, with the advancements in medicine, who knows? Congratulations, everybody. Happy 100 years. We work hard together. And now it's time to celebrate, yeah! Ooh.